Welcome to the Fast Fix channel. My name is Jason, and today I'm disassembling a Dyson V6 vacuum. This will be helpful to those who are experiencing surging problems, the device turning off after a short period of time, or for those who just want to do cleaning maintenance on their machine. These problems can usually be traced to a clogged filter, obstruction inside the vacuum, the extension, or the brush head. Okay, let's get right to work. Before we start, please be aware that you must have a T8 Torx screwdriver like the one seen here. You will not be able to disassemble the vacuum without this tool. There's no workaround, you must have the tool. These are readily available at your local home improvement store and I'll also link one in the description. Also find a thin but firm plastic instrument like the one I have here. I got this from a cell phone repair toolkit, but you certainly don't need to order one of those. Just stay away from using metal such as a butter knife that could damage the plastic parts. The first thing we need to do is remove the filter from the top. Simply lift the filter up and out. If you are experiencing surging problems or the vacuum shutting off after a short period of time, this is probably the cause. The filter is removable from the plastic, but I don't recommend doing that. It's not necessary and you can damage the plastic if you're not careful. These can accumulate a lot of dust, so run it under water and squeeze it as you do so. This will force out dirt and dust. Keep squeezing the filter and check for dirty water. Once the water is clear, set this aside for 24 hours or until you feel it's dry. Now let's remove the catch can. To do this, simply press down the red release latch. The bottom will open, but that's okay. At this point, you should be able to apply lateral force on the catch can and uncouple it from the body of the vacuum. It will be on firmly, so don't be afraid to apply some force. Sometimes letting up on the red release latch aids in removal, so give that a try if it seems stuck. Set aside once removed. Give the catch can a good once over and clean as necessary. Make sure there's nothing blocking the intake as this can cause surging problems amongst others. Now we need to remove the mesh screen. This is held in place by small plastic notches that need to be pressed out to release them. We need to use our plastic pry tool at this point and pry up on the mesh piece. Fair warning, this is probably the most frustrating part of disassembly because loosening this piece is fairly hard. Just keep at it and work the tool around until you've popped all the connections loose. There are six points of connection on this piece, all clocked about 15 degrees from each other. Starting at the main tab, as I did here, work around the piece prying up. You will hear some popping sounds and that's perfectly normal. This piece is fairly pliable, so don't be afraid that it's going to break. Definitely use caution, but don't be afraid to apply force when necessary. For reference, it took me about four minutes to remove this piece. Now we need to use the Torx screwdriver tool. There are five screws on the outside of this purple piece that you need to remove. Remove all five screws by turning the tool counterclockwise. Set the screws somewhere where you won't lose them. The purple piece can be removed now. Simply lift up to pull it loose. Give this piece a good cleaning. Remove the black center piece now by pulling it away from its mount. It's not connected by any screws, so just lifting up will work. Give this piece a good cleaning as well. This unit has already been cleaned so you can more easily see the small Torx screw heads inside the head unit. The screw heads are sometimes hard to see because they can become caked in dust. You may have to use pressurized air to expose them, but usually they are serviceable without doing that. There are five screws securing this piece. Remove all five by turning counterclockwise with the Torx screwdriver. Once the five screws are removed, we can remove the head unit from the main body of the vacuum. This is done by pressing in two white tabs that lock the head unit onto the body. Use the torque screwdriver and the plastic pry tool to press the white clips in as seen here. Then simply separate the two pieces. Only two screws are holding the assembly together now. Remove both and set aside. Now the head unit can be split. Pull both halves apart as seen here. There's a free fitting black piece in the middle. Pull this piece out to separate. Clean both halves well to remove any dust and debris. They probably won't be very dirty, but it's a good best practice to clean them. We are very much on the home stretch here. Only one more piece to separate is all that's left. Simply pull to remove. Give this piece a good cleaning as well. It's optional to remove the purple gasket as shown here, but feel free if you choose. Just make sure to allow the gasket to dry completely if you get it wet in the cleaning process. There's another gasket that's black in color hiding in the bottom, so don't miss that one. If you made it this far, congrats! You more than likely solved the surging or shutoff problems you were experiencing. Now all we have to do is reassemble. Remember to make sure everything is dry before reassembling. Install the black gasket. 
Now install the purple gasket. Install the free fitting center piece as seen here. Now join the interior pieces into the bottom half of the head unit just like this. Join the upper and lower pieces and install the two small screws. It can be a little tricky to get the longer screws installed, so if you've got a pair of needle nose pliers, use these to guide the screws into position. Tighten all five, but don't over tighten or they could strip. Now install the longer black piece onto the head unit. This is an easy press fit. Just make sure it's snugged and secure. Let's put on the purple piece now and install all five screws. Again, don't over tighten or you might strip them out. Here are the notches I spoke about in the beginning of the video. You can see they're just small protrusions that hook small latches on the mesh piece that we'll put on next. See the small attachment points there? Just line them up and press down. It's much easier to install this piece than it is to remove it. Line the piece up accordingly and put it into place. Again, just use good downward force and it'll pop back in. Don't forget to install the filter. This is super easy. Just drop it in and press down. Connect the head unit to the main body by snapping the pieces back together as seen here. Connect the waste can by lining up the attachment points and moving it into place. This is intuitive and it should snap back easily for you. And that's it, you are done. And in my experience, this brought new life back into my vacuum and it worked as well as it did when it was new. The suction power was restored and the surging and early off issues were eliminated. And hey, if this video helped you, please help me and hit like and subscribe. It makes a world of difference. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of the day.